Well, the, the first thing that, that you'll see, I mean, this is nothing new. And there's actually a slide that says a new look at an old problem. I mean, heart surgery always have had, you know, uh, problems with uh, obviously bleeding. That's part of the game with the heparin we give. And we do have problems with uh, either uh, tamponade when there's a lot of clots in the pericardium in the first few hours, but you got to take back the patients. Later on, you can have pericardial effusions, which is also a problem. You may need to tap them, etc. And we also have uh, hemothoraces in the first few hours or pleural fusions down the road. So this is nothing new. This is why of all the, since old age, we always put chest tubes in. And what happened is that uh, because uh, some of us investigators looked at the problem in a different way, we kind of tried to tackle the problem of optimal drainage. And we just put together, I mean, it's a retained blood complications, or we could name the four that I just named to you, but I mean, it's a composite endpoint of complications related to poor drainage. Well, what is very interesting is that uh, there, there were basic, you know, animal studies in the beginning to, to make sure that the, the catheters, the new catheter design was uh, appropriate. Also to look at what, what is the optimal size of chest tubes, how, how can they drain? That was done in the basic, that was done in the lab. Then, then there's a few other studies that look retrospectively at RBS or the composite retained blood uh, problem, looking at historical and then trying out the, the, the new catheter, the pleuroflow, and then looking at the results before and after, which is a common design. Uh, what's interesting is that on both sides of the OSHA, uh, the Atlantic, in Europe and in Canada, and uh, also now in the U.S., we've shown that with this type of design, that there is a decrease in all the complications and most the, the retained blood complications, but also other problems such as uh, acute kidney failure, post-op AFib, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, I'm going to present all that data this afternoon. Uh, we actually have uh, um, an ongoing prospective randomized trial at the Montreal Heart Institute. Before I left Thursday, we had 469 patients randomized, so we're almost done with the study. And the primary endpoint was to look at the uh, reduction of post-op AFib. So we're very excited to see uh, what's going to happen with that. And we have uh, sub-studies looking at imaging. Everybody says if the chest tube drains better, there should be less blood in the pericardium. Well, we're doing serial echoes in the controls and in the pleuroflow group to see uh, what goes on in the pericardium in the first 24 hours. And we also have a biochemical study uh, looking at the, the co composition of the fluid because we believe that if there is blood retained within the pericardium, this is a source of inflammation. And we're going to track it by comparing what comes out of the chest tubes in the pleural flow and in the controls and also uh, uh, correlated with plasmatic or serum inflammation. So this is uh, ongoing studies and I, I do think that uh, perhaps other centers that have adopted the, the technology are doing the same type of historical control uh, design studies. Well, I mean, the, the, first thing, the first thing is take backs. You know, so, so, yeah, so you're not talking about those. So, so you know, we said it, uh, hemothoraces, pleural fusion, that need tapping, uh, take backs, pericardial, late pericardial effusions. But, but then if you have a patient that has inflammation, the, the risk of developing post-op AFib, inflammation due to a retained clot within the pericardium, they will have a greater propensity to develop post-op AFib. And then you have these people, if they're going back, they may be unstable, they may need vasopressors, so they'll have an acute kidney injury, uh, they may have a longer stay in the ICU. Overall, it's going to cost the hospital much more. And, and I'm going to sh show data that's, that shows show data that, that demonstrates that if you have these complications, your mortality rate is going up, your obviously length of stay, and uh, there's, no, there's not one good thing about blood in the pericardium, that's for sure. Well, uh, first, uh, for, let's start with the nurses, because that, that's much easier. You, you know, the active clearance mechanism that one day will be automated, I'm, I'm hearing probably next year, will be automated. So the nurses won't have to touch it, it's going to be battery operated. But right now they, they actuate it themselves manually. But it's, this is much safer and much easier than actually milking, which is an old technique, or stripping the chest tubes or, or breaking the sterile field. 
for doctors, it's obvious. I mean, if I'm sure that my patient is properly drained, I probably am not going to take them back just to go take a look. I am, I'll be confident that what I can correct, uh, you know, coagulation problems while I'm seeing the blood come out because I'm sure they're not going to tampon that. And I, I actually have a few case reports about that. When I, we thought that the patients were tamponading, and we used the mechanism even more, and it went away. So it's you know that, that's an anecdote, but overall that's it. The so the it's definite. There's an average price depending on in the U.S. One retained blood complication will lead to an increase of twenty-seven or twenty-eight thousand dollars more. I mean this is impactful. Obviously we're talking. You have to make an investment, a small invest investment which is the price of the catheter which is a few hundred dollars uh, depending on where you live but you will save money ultimately and if you have a small or medium or large size program if you decrease your incidence of complications you're going to see that the, the savings right away and ultimately I mean this is better medicine well the first thing is this is an important problem every surgeon on the planet every team every cardiac center has it 17%, 20%, depending on how you measure it. It's a universal problem. Now, this device is easy to use. For the surgeon, it doesn't change anything. It's very easy to put in. For the nurses, it is, once they're used to it, they actually uh, have a, a better time and they enjoy it because it's a very precise design. It's not dangerous. You're not breaking the sterile field. You're not putting excessive pressure. And, and I think that the, all surgeons should address their own results, and I, basically, I would try. I would tell anybody to try a few, and you'll be convinced right away.